difference between the past and the present. Because of that now, of that realization, I repent. Number three, renounce spiritual laziness. Renounce spiritual laziness. You understand? And let's say, for example, about 10 years ago, you were an athlete. You, you wake up in the morning and then you'll do some exercise, either the treadmill or you're jogging, you're, you're running, or you're doing some exercise to keep your body in shape. And now, after ten, about 10 years now, you stopped all the exercise. You don't do that anymore. If you want to wake up now to get to do it, the bones are lazy. The joints are lazy. And the whole body, if you try about uh, 5 minutes, about 15 minutes exercise, you'll be having aches and pains all over your body. But you are intelligent enough to know you will endure that initial pain of coming back to recover your program of exercises. That means then you renounce spiritual laziness. Number four, you rededicate, rededicate your life. This is what must be done. I must do it. There's no alternative. I'm going to give myself to it. And then when you rededicate yourself, resume. Resume. It's not just that you are imagining and saying and thinking, I will do it. I plan to do it. I think I must do it. Actually respond. Respond to the needs around you. You resume that activity, that evangelism. It's like I've learned a lot today. I've heard a lot today. From what I've heard today, what I've learned today, I'm going to get something started. Resume. Number six, receive the promise of God. And receive the power of God. And receive the passion of the Lord. So you receive from the Lord. And then now, number seven, you renew. You renew. You renew your own time, your own life. You reorganize yourself. You know, a lot of things have come into your life. You have been doing this and this and this and this. And all those things have crowded out. They're so winning away from your life. Now, you reorganize yourself. You repeat what you used to do. You know, you, you get back. How was I spending my time? In 1985, how was I spending my time in 1989? How was I spending my time in 1990? How was I spending my time 10 years ago? And then you reorganize your time and reorganize your life and say, yes, I understand. What has come into my life now? What are some of the things I can just get rid of that are not as important as personal evangelism? Not bad things. When you're, you're Christians, we thank God you're children of God. We're not doing bad things, but there are some good things I told you before that hinder better things or the best away from our lives. We get rid of those things that hinder personal evangelism. You organize yourself. You remember what it used to be. You make a repetition now of what you used to do and then you'll get back again. I said you'll get back again. Amen. And you will be useful in the hand of the Lord. And great the reward in your life in Jesus' name. And let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, yes, we have heard and this is exactly what we're going to do. This is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to reorganize ourselves, organize our time, organize uh, everything around us so that what we have neglected this personal evangelism, it will be done. Just tell the Lord, tell the Lord you are sorry for the negligence of the past. It's a loving Savior. It's a merciful Savior. It's a compassionate Savior. He understands. He understands. And the moment you say, Lord, I'm sorry, that same moment he says, I forgive you. But now, if you are truly sorry, you now say, Lord, I've realized, and Lord, I repent. Lord, I've realized, Lord, I repent. Lord, I've realized, Lord, I repent. And I renounce spiritual laziness. I will open my mouth. I will talk to my friends. I'll talk to my neighbors. I'll talk to people around me. I love them. I don't want them to perish. I love them. I want them to be saved. I will give my testimonies to them. How I came to know the Lord. I will stop thinking in my mind evangelism is difficult. I'll stop that kind of unnecessary fear of any neighbor 
any friend, any man, any woman, I now realize it's as simple as telling them, I am saved, you can be saved too. I am married, you can be married too. I am blessed, you can be blessed too. I have Jesus as my Savior and Lord. You can have Jesus as your Savior and Lord too. Simple as that. Renounce spiritual laziness. I say, Lord, here I am. I'm going to serve you. Mark out those people you need to tell. Identify those neighbors you need to tell. Rededicate your life. Rededicate your time. Rededicate your talent. Rededicate your voice unto the Lord. Lord, I will do it. A fresh commitment, a new commitment. I know you love the Lord. The Lord wants you to show how much you love Him by telling other people around you how they can be saved. Rededicate yourself. Whatever the good thing you're doing is not complete. Keep on doing those good things. Keep on doing those good things. But it's not complete until you tell other people how they can be saved. Whatever wonderful things you are doing are not complete until you are willing to tell other people and you actually program yourself to tell other people how they can be saved. And resume. Get started. You can do it. The greatest soul winners today started one day. You can start today. The most effective preachers, evangelists, started one day. You can start your own today. Many people who have seen more in the kingdom of God won each kingdom. There was one night they started. There was one day they started. You can start today. Resume. There are many needs around you. Respond to those needs. Many people are ignorant of how they can be saved. You have the knowledge. You have the revelation. The Lord has opened your eyes to see. Help other people that their eyes too will be opened. And they too will be able to see that Jesus is Savior. And Jesus can be their Savior. The Lord has forgiven you. Tell others how did you can be forgiven. Resume immediately. Resolve that I'm starting at this time. This knowledge, I'll meditate on it. I will apply it. I will stand on it. I'll work on it. Make it practical, workable in my life. Receive the promise of God. I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with your mouth. Receive the promise of the Lord. You don't have anything to fear. He will protect you. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye the General Superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your heart. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. 
And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.